Hi everyone, welcome to this video. It's, this is the last lesson for our chapter that we're wrapping up where we were learning about um, equations of lines. We just finished arithmetic sequences and now we're gonna talk about proportional and non-proportional um, relationships as far as linear equations go. So um, proportional, we already know the word proportion. Proportion is you know when you're solving that equation where you've got a ratio set equal to a ratio remember uh, probably doing cross products or things like that to solve. And that's pretty much gonna come into play here when we're talking about what's proportional and what's non-proportional. So a proportional relationship says, if the equation passes through zero, zero, so the origin, and is of the form y equals kx. Now we should remember, because we just learned this, y equals kx is a direct variation where k is the constant of variation. So, and we learned every direct variation always goes through the origin. So a proportional relationship looks just like a direct variation. They're one in the same, okay? It says then the relationship is proportional. So for example, if I give you y equals 3x, and we've now already graphed this equation, we know what the table looks like, everything like that. Let's say we went ahead and we filled in our table. So if I substitute in a, a negative 2, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 3 times 0 is 0. Remember, a direct, uh, direct variation goes to the origin. 3 times 1 is 3. Uh, 3 times 2 is 6. Um, we're good with that. But now what I really want to show you is it's proportional. So if I was to take any two x values and y values and basically just set up fractions, what you're going to see is this 1 half, 1 over 2, is equal to three over six. One half is equal to three six. It's completely proportional. If I did, I could do the same thing here. Negative two over negative one is equal to negative six over three. That's proportional because that's two equals two. I could even set it up here. Zero over one is equal to zero over three. It's just both zero. That is what a proportional relationship looks like. You can literally set up a proportion within the table. And if I go to graph this direct variation, we already know, um, you know, plotting those points, we're going to see it goes to the origin. So again, any direct variation is considered a proportional relationship. And the reason why it's called proportional is it can, you can actually just set up a proportion. It works out perfectly. There's no numbers that kind of get mixed up or kind of adjust anything out differently. Whereas a non-proportional relationship would have an additional number at the end of the equation. It doesn't just look like y equals kx. There's an additional value here. So if you look at this equation over here on the right, y equals 2x minus 1. If it just said y equals 2x, it would be proportional. But because it has that little minus 1 at the end, you're going to see it's going to pretty much mess things up. If I go ahead and I make a table of values, so 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 1 is negative 3. 2 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is positive 1. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. And I grab these two bottom here ones like I did in the previous one. Look at that. Is 1 half equal to 1 third? Definitely not. And if I set up any of these and I tried to do the same thing, is negative 2 over 1 equal to negative 5 over 3? It's definitely not. They are not equal. And so a, a non-proportional relationship, basically this little negative 1 at the end messed everything up. It made it so that you couldn't set up any proportions within this table at all. None nothing will work. And when you go ahead and you plot those points on a graph, you're going to see it definitely doesn't go through the origin it actually goes to the y-intercept of 0, negative 1, which you'll see, this is my y-intercept. Notice the y-intercept in the table, 0, negative 1. Notice this negative 1 at the end of the equation. That's your y-intercept. That's actually where the graph is going to always cross the y-axis, whatever this number is at the end. So here, y equals 3x, you don't see any number at the end, which actually means it's 0. And this is why it goes through 0, 0. That's just a little foreshadowing before we get to our next chapter where we really talk about the slope and the y-intercept and all that good stuff. Okay, so here it says complete each table of values, then write the equation um, for the function. All right, so here. So we have to fill in the table 
based on what's missing. I'm going to zoom out so we can see things just a little bit better. That's perfect. Okay, so negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. I can clearly see that my x values are just increasing by 1s. I'm going to put a little plus 1 here. My y values, I see that it's going up by 5. So if I continue this and add 5, add 5, add 5, you'll see that, hey, this table actually goes through 0, 0. So this is a proportional relationship. And now remember from our previous lesson that we did to write the equation for this, proportional relationship, this direct variation, it's simply y equals kx. k is my slope in this case. My slope would be 5 over 1. Remember, it's the change in y over the change in x. And so my equation is just simply y equals 5x. If I want it in function notation, it would be f of x equals 5x. Remember, we just replace y with f of x in function notation. So now let's look at this. My x values are increasing by 2s. My y values, I see I need to subtract by 2s as I'm going. So if I want to continue that table, this is what it would look like. So now um, it's, I see it goes through the origin, 0, 0. So this one went through the origin. This one goes through the origin. So all I need is to just figure out my slope. So my change in y over change in x. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So my equation is y equals negative x or f of x equals negative x. Okay, now my next one. I see my x values are increasing by 3s. You can again see it goes through the origin. So I know this is a direct variation. So my x values are increasing by 3s. My y values to go from 1.5 to 0 means I'm subtracting 1.5. Subtracting 1.5. Sorry, it looks all different here. Um, my slope, remember it's change in y divided by the change in x. So negative 1.5 divided by 3 is negative half. So that is my equation, y equals negative 1 half x, or f of x equals negative 1 half x. Okay, next set of tables, we're going to see this is a little different. These are going to be our non-proportional relationships. So I can see in my first table, my x values are increasing by 1. All right, so that's good. My y values, I can see, are also increasing by 1s. So then this is 5 and 6. And notice that it does not go through the origin. It actually goes through 0, 5. So now to set up my equation, here's the deal. I still figure out my slope. So my change in y divided by my change in x. So 1 divided by 1 is just 1. So my equation starts with y equals x. But then this is my y-intercept, 0, 5. So that means this 5 gets tacked onto the end of my equation. So my equation is now y equals x plus 5. If it was 0, 0 here, I would be done. Because it doesn't intercept through 0, 0, it intersects at 0, 5. That means the entire y equals x graph just basically got shifted up 5 units. And then, of course, in function notation. Okay, next one, 0, 2, 4, 6. So this is going up by 2s. I can see over here on the right, this should be decreasing by 2. So negative 6, negative 8. If I go ahead and I figure out my slope, so negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, so negative 1x. Notice this equation doesn't go through 0, 0. It goes through 0, negative 2. So instead of having 0 at the end of this equation, it's going to be a negative 2 at the end. Last one, I can see my x values are increasing by 3. My y values, I can see down here, are adding by 5. So if I work backwards and subtract 5, so 5 and then 0. Again, you can see it's not going through 0, 0. It's going through 0, 5, just like this one did. So then I set up my, um, my slope. My slope is 5 divided by 3. Change in y divided by change in x. So 5 thirds x. And then at the end of my equation, I put that plus 5. And so these would be my non-proportional relationship graphs. Okay. So now I want to show you um, looking at the actual graph and writing the equation. So here we could see both of these go through the origin. So since they both go through the origin, that would mean that they are direct variation. So all I need to do is figure out my slope. I can count my slope here as I would rise 2, 
run three. So my slope is two over three. And that's all I need to write my equation because again, I see it goes through the origin. This next one here, from point to point, I could see I have to rise negative two, run one. So a negative two over one gives me a slope of just negative two. Over here, guys, I'm gonna mark this up. This was rise two, run three. And so my equation is just simply y equals negative two x or f of x equals negative two x. And then my non-proportional relationships, we can see these do not go through the origin. Um, I do need to still figure out my slope, so I would have to rise to run three. So my slope is two thirds. Um, so it's y equals two thirds x, but again, notice it doesn't go through the origin. It goes through this ordered pair of zero, negative two. So at the end of the equation, two thirds x, I put minus two. And then my last one here, um, it doesn't go through the origin, my slope down two to the right one. So my slope is negative two. So it's y equals negative two x. But again, notice it doesn't go through the origin. It goes through the point of zero one. And so that one gets tacked on to the end of our equation. And that's it. Okay. Um, the last few problems here are basically a mixed review between proportional relationships and arithmetic sequences, which was our previous lesson. It says for each arithmetic sequence, determine the function and whether it is proportional. So one, three, five, seven. So if I take a look at this sequence, my a sub one is one, my common difference d is two. If I go ahead and I plug in my a sub one is one, my common difference d is two. I would then, we did this in a previous lesson, we would distribute the two, combine our like terms. And now to really just write it in function notation, I'm gonna replace the a sub n with f of x. And I'll look at that. Would f of x equals two x minus one, would that look like it's the proportional relationship or the non-proportional relationship? We should be saying non-proportional because of this minus one. That pretty much changes everything for us. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. If you want to pause your screen and try these on your own um, and then press play and see how you do, please definitely do that. Okay, so for this one, my a sub one is five. My common difference here is also five. I would substitute in my a sub one and my common difference d. Distribute, combine like terms. And when you combine like ter terms here, five and negative five actually just give you five n. So then if I replace my n with x and I replace a sub n with f of x, look at the equation you get. It's just f of x equals 5x. Is that proportional or non-proportional? It is definitely proportional. I'm going to encourage you to definitely um, pause right now, try these two problems, and then press play. Okay, so hopefully you paused, you pressed, and now you're pressing play to check. See what I did for a sub one and my common difference d. Here is what it would look like filled in and distributed. Number three is definitely non-proportional. Number four, here's what it would look like filled in to the sequence. And that is definitely a proportional relationship. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.